Good morning. This question is for Mr. Jay Walken. First, I would like to apologize. This was a question raised by him more than two months ago, I think. I also would like to apologize to all of you who are my subscribers here in YouTube for being out for more than two months. Uh, it is simply because I had a major operation and thanks to God, I am recovering and after that, after my operation and recovering, I did a little coping up with my backlog in my work. But now I'm back. First, I'd like to invite you to enroll in our refresher course. For face-to-face, -face, it will be on September 12 in Baguio and Davao. Here in Cebu City, we will be starting on September 19. While online, if you have relatives or you are not yet licensed civil engineer, I am inviting you to attend our online refresher course which will start on October 3. Also, we will be starting our October 15 online coaching for the November 2022 Civil Engineering Board Exam. In here, we will be discussing the last civil engineering board exam. It would always be an advantage to have the previous board exam before taking the board exam because a lot of the previous board exam, most especially the two latest, the two last board exams are frequently repeated. About 20% of them will be repeated in the next board exam. So it would be an advantage. Don't, so don't miss our coaching course for November 2022 Civil Engineering Board Exam. Jay Walken Channel raised three questions actually or three issues. Number one, in analyzing and designing a truss, we were taught in school to analyze it with hinge roller support at the end. Is that correct? Huh? Or is that okay? So there are two different issues there. Number two, he said that why not design it using pin, using hinge, hinge support because it will result to smaller forces in the elements. Whether that is right or wrong, then we will try to address in this discussion. Now the third question that he raised is which one, which is the best way or the correct way to analyze and design a truss. Now if this is our truss, we were taught in school most of the trusses that we, we encountered in school is supported with a hinge and roller here. Let me analyze this. So with this loading, for simplicity, this is 4 meters. This is 3 meters. This is theta. So, for the sake of simplicity and fast computation, take note that this is a 3, 4, therefore this is 5. So, the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse 3 over 5, that is 0.6. While the cosine of theta is 4 over 5, 4 over 5 is 0.8. So, I will not rewrite this and rewrite it again if I'm referring to sine theta and cosine theta. Okay? Now, analyzing this truss, solving the reactions, this is force right. So, the only one that can resist that is the hinge. So, there is a horizontal reaction here and a vertical reaction, right? So there is a vertical reaction here, vertical reaction here. Force right equals force left, so this must be 4 kilonewtons, correct? Now, considering this one, this is vertical at C, this is A, B, C. A, B, C, D. So, considering this joint, this of course is theta. So, this is vertical at C. If I'm going to take summation of moment at A equals zero in order to eliminate both of this. So, you will get here 4 times 3 plus 10 times 4 minus Vc over 
of VC times the moment arm 8 meters is equal to 0. So solving our VC, our VC is going to be equal to 6.5 kilonewtons. So this is 6.5. Now considering this joint, this is up, this must be down, this is to the right, so this must be to the left. Meaning this is compression, this is tension. So this is the force in member BC for this truss. Okay? While this is the force in member BC. By taking summation of forces Y is 0 or force up equals force down, my force up is VC, 6.5, while my force down is the vertical component of PDC, it's not adjacent to theta, so it's sine. So PDC, the sine of theta. Sine of theta is 0.6. So PDC is 6.5 over 0.6. So you will get here PDC is going to be negative 10.83. So this is, a, I just included the negative here to indicate that it is compression. But in this computation, this is positive. So it is 10.83 compression, so I will be putting the sign negative for compression. Negative 10.83. Now, summation of forces horizontal is zero or forces right equals force left. The force left is PBC, while the force right is the horizontal component of this, which is 10.88 multiplied by it is adjacent to theta so 10.88 cosine theta cosine theta is 0 0.8 0 0.8 times this your PBC is going to be 8.67 it's away from the joint so this is tension so this is plus 8.67 now moving to joint B force down equals force up so this is also tension. So this is plus 10. So at joint B, this is tension. So at B, this is also tension 8.67. So force right equals force left. So this is also plus 8.67. So this is 8.67, right? You get it, okay? So for our force here, this is the only one missing force, right? Joint A, we just need this one. If we know this, we can solve this one, right? So, moving to joint A, considering first the entire diagram, force up equals force down. So, this is vertical at A. So, vertical at A plus 6.5 force up equals force down is equal to 10. So the vertical at A is 10 minus 6.5. This is 3.5. Now at joint A, force up equals force down. So this is the force in AD. So force up is 3.5. Force down is the vertical component of PAD. It's not adjacent to theta, so it's sine. So P, A, D, sine of theta. Sine theta is 0.6, so P, A, D is 3.5 over 0.6. You'll get here, your P, A, D is equal to 5.83. And that is compression, so I will put here a negative sign. Negative 5.83. If this truss with a given load 4 right and 10 down with hinge and roller supports, these are the forces in kilonewton experienced by the members. But what about if they are hinge, if it is hinge, hinge supported? Now take note that this truss is statically indeterminate, meaning it cannot be 
solved by merely summation of forces x0, summation forces y0, summation of moment 0. Because you have two reactions here, two reactions here, four reactions, unknown reactions all in all, and we just have three static equations. So we will have more unknowns than equations statically indeterminate, cannot be solved by statics. So what are we going to do? We need a what we so-called deformation equation. Okay? Now, this is it. This truss with the vertical at A and the vertical at C, horizontal at C, horizontal at A, this truss is equivalent to this truss with roller support, your HC, one of the unknown reactions will be considered a what we so-called redundant. Huh? So we treat this now as a redundant. A redundant is a reaction, specifically a support reaction, which will be treated as an active force rather than a reactive force. Active means applied force. Okay? So meaning there are already three applied forces. 10, 4, and 8C. By the method of superposition, take note if this is applied, there is only one reaction because this is applied force. Treated as applied force. If there is only one reaction for this support, it is equivalent to just a roller support. So by method of superposition, this truss is equivalent to this truss with 4 and 10 as loads plus the same truss with 8C as the load. You get it? So this is the same as this plus this. So the stresses here is equal to the stresses here plus the stresses here. You get it? The reactions here is equal to the reaction here plus the reaction here. You get it? Now, the key equation is this. Now take note because this is hinge and this is hinge, no way that this joint, this joint will move horizontally or vertically. So meaning the delta x here is zero. But since this is a roller, it can roll horizontally to the right or to the left. But with this 4 kN load, it is obvious that it is it will be pushing the truss to the right only resisted by uh, hinge support at A. Nonetheless, because our elements are deformable, so this joint C will roll to the right. So it will have a deformation to the right. So this will be delta X C. Let me call this delta X C prime. But in here, plus, because of this HC, this will move this truss to the left. So it will be something like this. I will just be drawing the point C. So there will be here a delta C, delta X, at C double prime. So our key equation is this. So our key equation for this truss is going to be the delta x at C in the original, we know that this is zero, equals delta x C prime, here, delta x C prime minus delta x C, right? minus simply because this is to the left while this is to the right. It is actually this plus this. But this is a displacement to the left. 
So minus plus or minus. You get it? But using the unit load method, take note that this is zero because delta xc in the original is zero. Using unit load method, this is simply the summation of p small pl over ae. This is for this trust. Let me call this trust two. Let me call this trust with loading three. That is original trust trust one with all the loads. So this is PPL over AE in trust two minus summation of P PPL over AE in trust three is equal to zero. Now for simplicity, I will just take HC to the right. Why? Because if I want the deflection to the right using unit load method, my unit loading for delta Xc is this one. I will apply a unit load at C. Okay? This is the unit loading for delta X at C. If I'm going to do in the drawing Hc to the right, no? If I will instead draw this in the same direction as the unit load, then I will have to reverse the sign of this. So it will become plus. Okay? But Hc, that correct direction of Hc will be revealed by a negative sign in its value. So our equation will become simply PPL over AE of 2 plus PPL over AE of 3. But take note, if this would be your HC now, the reason why I am using HC in this direction in order to have the same unit load. So this is unit load. If this is 10, all forces will be multiplied by 10. If this is 100, all forces will be multiplied by 100. So if the forces here are small p, since this is 8c, the forces here are small p times 8c. You get it? So therefore, this one, this one, this is small p times hc. So small p times hc, small p times hc, it will be pp, p squared hc, l over ae. You get it? You follow, okay? So this is going to be summation of ppl over ae into plus summation of small p small p small p small p l over ae or p squared l over ae times h c this is four three and this is equal to zero you get it so the reason one more reason why i just reverse it so that I will be using the same unit loading for this one, for two, and for three. So this small p for two and small p for three will now be the same. Instead of having them to have opposite values and opposite directions. The only force that I reverse instead is hc and everything will are taken care of. Okay? All right. If AE is constant, multiply everything by AE. Then, in this problem, AE is not given. So, I just presume AE is constant. If it is not constant, then by all means, you use the AE for each member. Okay? So, if AE is constant, multiply everything by AE. This cancels out. This cancels out. Zero times AE, zero. 
So, the equation reduces to P, small p, L, of trust to, plus summation of small p squared L multiplied by HC. HC can be factored out. Okay? You follow? And this is equal to zero. This will be our guide equation for that one. Let me call this equation one. Let me solve our small p. Big P are the forces in the elements due to the actual load in trust two. Small p are the forces in the elements due to unit load. Let me solve them. So force right cannot be resisted by this because this must be vertical. So here, the only support that can support this one is the hinge. So this must be one right, one left. Correct? At this joint, summation of forces vertical is zero. There is only one force, this one, so this must be zero. Right? Okay. Now, at this joint, this is vertical at C. This is vertical at A. This is theta. If we take summation of moment at point A equals zero, this external load doesn't have a moment at A. So, moment at A is zero. So, zero minus BC times A is zero. I put it here. Zero minus BC times A is zero. I am taking here summation of moment at A is zero. So, taking summation of moment at A is zero, the external load one doesn't have a moment at A. So, minus VC times A is equal to zero. So, VC is equal to zero. Force up equals force down. So, VA is also zero. Okay? Now, at this, if this is zero, it's just like having no force in it. Correct? No reaction at it because I repeat, this is zero. This is also VA, VA also zero. VC is also zero. Now, at this joint, take note, this and this are collinear by taking summation of forces vertical there is only one force that would have vertical component but since this is the only one with vertical component by rule of thrust the two are collinear the third will be zero by symmetry this is also zero force right equals force left so this is tension this is also plus one this is also Plus one. I suggest when you are solving statically indeterminate thrust, begin with small p, then followed by the big p. Okay? Why? Because if the others are zero, definitely if this is zero, then whatever the value p, the value will be zero. So your interests are only the members with non-zero small p. In this particular case, A, B, and B, C. Just this. You get it? Okay. Now, once we solve them, take note that since this is 8C, this is 1. Okay? If this is 10, all of them, all of those will be multiplied by 10. If this is 100, all of those will be multiplied by 100. If this is 8C, all of those will be multiplied by 8C. So this is plus 1, 8C. This is plus 1, 8C. 0, 0, 0. You get it? Okay? So this is also 1, 8C. This is also 
zero. This is also zero. Okay. Okay. So therefore, substituting in here, substituting them, we have summation of PPL over EE. So let me do the tabulated computation. Okay. So this is your member. Remember, I will no longer include AD and DC and BD because they will have a value of 0, 0, 0, right? Correct. So I will no longer include AD, BD, and DC. Okay? Why? Look here. If I include them here, AD, then... DC, then BD, then the horizontal AB and BC. So this would be the member or the elements. This is the big P. The big P, the load, the stresses in the elements due to these forces are minus 5.83 minus 10.88 plus 10 plus 8.67 plus 8.67 okay but for the small p small p they are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. so this is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. for our length this is 5, this is 5, this is 3, this is 4, 4. And when we compute our big P times small P times L, PPL, you'll have here 0 times this times this, 0, this times 0 times 5, 0, this times 0 times this, 0. So that's why I told you, begin solving the stresses in the elements due to unit loading because many elements will have zero force. So it means when you solve the forces in the elements due to the actual load, just solve the forces in the elements with non-zero force due to unit load. Because those with zero forces due to unit load will just have a value equal to zero. So 8.67 times 4, what you will have here will be 34.7. This is 34.7. Well, when we have P squared times L, small p squared times L, this will all be zero, zero, zero. So you have one times this, this is four, this is 4. So, the summation will be equal to what? So, the summation of this will be 69.4 while the sum of this will be 8. So, substituting to this, PPL is 69.4 plus this is P squared L is 8 plus 8, 8C equals 0. So solving our 8C, our 8C is equal to negative 8.67. The negative sign is an indicator that it is opposite the direction of the unit load. It's not to the right, it's rather to the left. This is negative 8.67. Okay, ne this is negative 8.67. This is 1 times negative 8.67. This is negative 1 times negative 1.67. This is 0, this is 0. Right? Okay, so this is not to the left but to the right. This is not to the right but really to the left. That is the indication of the negative sign. You get it? You follow? Okay? Now, we are ready 
to show the forces there. So this is by superposition. This is equal to this plus this. So the stress in this element is minus 5.83 plus 0. It is minus 5.83. The force in this element, hinge hinge, and hinge roller are just the same. So minus 10.88 plus 0, this is minus 10.88. 88. In here, they are just the same. 10 plus 0, this is plus 10. Here, they are the same. Then, I have 8.67 minus 8.67. This time, it's 0. 8.67 minus 8.67. This time, it's 0. The stresses in these members are smaller than the stresses in these members. Jay Walken is correct when he said, when you analyze it with hinge and roller, the forces in the elements are bigger than this. Meaning, this will be, since the forces in the members are bigger than those, in the hinge hinge support the design here is more economical okay more economical than this let me address now the questions or the issues he raised we were taught in school to analyze a truss with hinge roller support the problem is this it was not emphasized that it can be analyzed depending on the situation using hinge hinge. What? But in fairness to our instructors in school, this was introduced during mechanics when the concept of supports is just was just introduced. So civil engineering students or structural engineering students do not know yet. We are not equipped yet to solve a statically indeterminate structure until they were taught theory of structures. The problem is this analysis or to emphasize this kind of analysis was overlooked or was no longer revisited during the theory of structures and during the steel design. Okay, so I repeat this will give you, according to Jay Walken, this will really give you a more economical result than this. So, is it okay, however, to design uh, a truss using hinge roller support? My answer is, it really depends on what kind of truss and what is the purpose of the truss. If the truss, just like in our figure, is a roof truss for a house, then it's okay to design a truss using hinge roller support. Okay? Okay for the engineer because the design or the designing process, the analysis will be easier. Why we were taught this one and in most books, why examples are just like this. Most of them are like this. It is simply because when those books were written, when those books were written, computers were not yet available, okay? Oh, were not yet no. available to a lot of people. So, for example, during my time, there is no compute. There was no computer yet in the Philippines. So, all computations will be done manually using our ordinary, non-programmable, without advanced functions calculator. So everything is really done manually. So error, it is really an error prone, very tedious computation. So what we do is we simplify the computation. And the simplest way to simplify the computation for a truss is by taking this as a hinge and this as a roller. But now there are computers, there is no more excuse. No? If the truss must be analyzed this way, or to be more specific, 
if the trust must be modeled meaning analyzed in on paper using hinge hinge then by all means you have to analyze it this way but analyzing it this way will result in a more conservative meaning sort of over design elements is it okay is it okay for the engineer because it will give us bigger member safer member okay but take note that there are two things to consider in design they are safety and economy economy is for the client and safety is for the engineer and of course for the client also but it would be unfair to the client to do it very very safe very conservative while it can be done also economically so between the safety and economy is a good design okay because as you approach extreme economy you are actually increasing the risk this will be about risk with decreasing economy you are approaching more safety you are actually reducing the risk for unforeseen factors you get it so if the question is is it okay to analyze a truss with this method for roof house trusses it's okay okay but for economy then this will be good does it mean that this is not safe it is safe why this will give you a more reliable result because the truth is in houses you don't provide rollers a support on the ends of a truss because actually the truss if this is your column then what you do if this is the top cord and this is the bottom cord what you do actually is you strap this with a with a with a reinforcement then pour the concrete to this level so that in essence this is actually fixed and it will not be allowed to move like a roller in the actual scenario you get it remember the modeling or how you draw it how you analyze it in design during design process and how it will be used or installed or construct constructed in the actual thus the nearer the model to the actual the more reliable the result becomes so this would be more reliable the result is more reliable more accurate than this one okay but it's safe but it's uneconomical this is safe reliable economical so jaywalking is correct you get it but the question is which one which method or which method of supports is correct more correct in analyzing a truss or designing a truss it depends on what truss you are designing for roof truss for houses i would suggest this is more correct more economical more reliable than this one you get it okay but for bridge truss it's a different story and it's a different post it's a different discussion i will discuss that later okay so see you kindly enroll in our online course refer your relatives you refer your friends to the best online platform online review for civil engineering and also if you have relatives who are college they need our mastery courses for college algebra differential calculus analytic geometry trigonometry spherical trigonometry and geometry as preparation for their college without those preparation your son your relatives your friends will find it difficult really to cope up 
in their first year in engineering. So we have those courses for them. If you have friends or relatives who are still in college and they are really finding it hard to cope up with their civil engineering subjects or mathematics subjects, refer them to us to enroll in our mastery courses. Or if it is you, then enroll in our mastery course. It will help you really a lot at a very, very friendly, very economical, but reliable price. Okay? So, see you.